Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to Bright Falls and Alan Vake 2. So we managed to track down Alan Vake after we were attacked by a dead FBI agent and a group of monsters called the Taken. Of course, Alan has been missing for 13 years. He's now with us again, apparently in the real world. Let's jump back in and continue with the story. Are you okay? Oh, no! It's my fault! They got out with my face! Scratch! Sir, calm down. I'm gonna need you to take a breath. He's... he's changed the story. The, the dark presence. We must stop it before... Easy now. First things first. What's your name? My name is Alan Wake. I'm a writer. I, I've been... Wake? Where did you come from? You've been missing for 13 years. 13? Anders, where did you go? All of a sudden, the radio stopped working, and then that flooding just disappeared. The crazy forest. Is this who I think it is? Casey, say hello to Alan Wake. Mr. Wake, this is Special Agent Alex Casey. He'll escort you to our car. Casey, I'll meet you there, right after I take a look around. If the flooding's receded, there might be evidence we missed earlier. Okay. See you there. Alex Casey, how am I still? Is this the dark place? No, it can't be. I got out. Yeah, the PI from your books has the same name as me. Great. Moving on. All right, so right here we have a few objectives. I'm going to go ahead and collect our first stash. Should look around. With the flooding gone, could be further clues out there. The flooding disappeared very suddenly. I wonder if there's any connection to the overlap to Nightingale. Uh, these dashes will be found in the world as you play. A creepy twig sculpture? A locked box. Is that the cult of the tree symbol on it? Uh, the stash will have a different combination every time. Make sure you pay attention to the sequence so you get the code. Notes and ammo. Looks like they're tools of the trade. The cult doesn't see their victims as people. All right, from here, we will be headed to the Witchfinder station. On your way there, you will encounter a new enemy. Uh, 
uh, right here you just want to keep moving make sure you are reloaded if you are using the shotgun uh two shells should take care of it even the animals are turning into monsters I did come across this fishing line and a note. I'm not sure of its significance, but uh, I guess it's good for lower purposes. And next, you want to head over here on the map. There's something written here. A poem? Or a riddle? Reminds me of the nursery rhymes I read to Logan when she was little. You will encounter these riddles and you're going to solve them by using dolls you find in the vicinity of the riddle. So right here we have our first doll. A little clothespin doll. Perfect weird souvenir for Logan. All right, right here I will utilize the mind place and set these pieces of evidence on the board. Nightingale goes missing for 13 years, shows up murdered, and then turns into a monster. After I stop Nightingale, a rider who's also been missing for 13 years turns up. What's the connection? What kind of case is this? Creepy dolls, mysterious rhymes, no weirder than anything else going on, I guess. For this puzzle, you want to place the crow doll on the sun, and that's it. Something feels different. I should look around. Now you will receive a charm. Make sure you check it out, and if it's useful to you, go ahead and slot it into the inventory. Charm. Cute. It'll go great on the bracelet Logan made for me. Huh. That was strange. Gotta keep an eye out for more of these rhymes. You can slot up to three at once. I'm not sure if more slots become available as you level up. And now we can head over to the Witch Finders station where we will find our second puzzle. Another one of those rhymes. Now the clues to the rhyme will be in the house. So the first doll will be right here on the ground and the second will be right here. From here, we want to head to the open fall on the bed. And make sure you collect by hitting the magnifying glass right there. Next, we are going to move to the room on the right. And again, check the file on the table. Of course, make sure you collect the evidence. Hey there, Mr. Deer. You remind me of a dream I had. The only other things I found in the cabin was the deer head and these two fowls 
over here in the laundry room don't look like they had that much significance all right so back to the puzzle we're gonna put the wolf doll onto the tree and the hero doll onto the boat i have a weird feeling something's changed follow the footprints back into the house for the charm another charm for my bracelet we've reached the car anderson how's it going down there i think i'm done here i'll meet you at the parking lot so if you followed the video you will check the optional objective we're gonna head back over to the parking lot On the way, you will most likely be attacked by Taken, so make sure you have your ammo ready. I did not find the key for this lockbox, but hopefully you guys can. Uh, there's probably going to be ammo and resources in there. Following the yellow arrows, you will find the streamside stash key. If you want to go ahead back up to streamside and search for that stash, totally up to you. I opted not to. Make sure you boost the darkness off the Taken before shooting. You want to go for headshots or if you see red weak points on the enemy, you want to go for those primarily. Saga with a melee strike. Not sure how we do that. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Definitely needed a melee strike in this game. Warning. Activity detected. A-W-E. Event in progress. Cauldron Lake. What's an A-W-E? Casey, what exactly does the FBC do? After New York, when I started looking for our friend here, their name came up. I pushed them for any files they had on him, but got stonewalled. They have a reputation of showing up for... Weird oh. shit. 
They have a presence here, and now we find our writer. How about that? You ready to go? Mr. Wake, we're taking you back to our field office in Bright Falls. You can freshen up there, and then we'll talk properly. Hey, Mom. Before you say anything, I'm totally fine. Don't freak out. Dad shouldn't have even texted you. Logan? No one texted me. What's going on? I'm totally fine. I slipped, that's all. God, it's not the end of the world. Put your father on the phone. Um, okay. Dad, it's Mom. Don't worry, hun. Logan slipped in the shower and bumped her head. She has a slight concussion, but I'm keeping an eye on her. Lucky I heard her fall. She could have drowned. Jesus, David. Why didn't you call? I tried. It didn't go through. She's fine, really. But what about you? You sound stressed. No, it's, uh... Just a weird case, that's all. Well, if you need a hint, my years of board game victories tell me Colonel Mustard did it. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep an eye out for him. <laughs> Love you, Dave. Love you too, honey. Wanna say bye to Logan? Just tell her I love her. Bye for now. The synced sipping will never get old. I wonder if that's cause of the story. Alan would write something like, as Agent Saga and Casey sip their coffees. Is there anyone you'd like us to reach out to, Mr. Wake? You've been gone a long time. No. No. If they'd be in danger, it'll come for me. Okay, let's talk about something else. Robert Nightingale, do you know him? You were both here in 2010. The Dark Presence got him back then. That's the last time I saw him. 13 years. Oh, fuck me. Tell us about the pages. You had what looks like a title page with you. Return. Is this the name of the story on these pages? The writer's name has been scratched out pretty violently, but your name can still be made out underneath. <laughs> scratched out. Yeah. Scratch. Did you write these pages, Mr. Wake? I'm trying to remember. It's... It's... It's a crazy jumble, like a... Like a nightmare. I, it doesn't... It doesn't make sense. All right, so what's about to happen? We are going to be jumping into Mr. Alan Wake's world. So this is where he was stuck for the last 13 years. We will see how he actually got out. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. We have a great show for you here tonight. Alan Wake is here. Alan Wake, one of my all-time favorite writers and guests on the show. He's here to talk about his latest book. Is I in a talk show tonight? Waking up in places with no memory of how I got there. 
It was out of control. I didn't need another mugshot in the fucking tabloids. Had I already done the show? Was that a recording? Good to see you, Alan. Uh, uh, this must be an exciting time for you. Tell me, does it ever get old? Sorry, does what get old? Publishing a new book. Are you okay there, my friend? You look like you've been cooped up in the writer's room for a few too many years. This is exactly how I feel. <laughs> you know, I've waited so long to get my hands on the sequel to Departure. You left us on quite the cliffhanger. We've all been dying to know what it's not a lake, it's an ocean really means. You and me both. Well, our wait is over. Your new book, Initiation, hits the shelves tomorrow. What? That's exactly what every reader will be asking. This book is mind-bending. It's so cerebral. I mean, how would you describe it? A an auto-fictional thought experiment? A, a, a horror story? A postmodern detective story? Wait. This isn't right. I, I haven't written anything. He's so humble. Okay. You got me. Good prank. Very funny. But yeah, I sad to say, I, I, I've not written this. I, I'd remember if I'd written a book, right? Or maybe it was written by your evil double. Well played, man. That is spot on. Playing the role here. Pretending the world of the book overlaps our own. That's very meta indeed. You see, Initiation tells the story of a fictional writer named Alan Wake, who is trapped in a nightmare, desperately trying to find the manuscript of a novel he has forgotten he has written. The book is set in New York, but it might not be New York at all. He is tormented by his dark doppelganger and guided by visions of a fictional detective he has written. That's right. Alex Casey is in this book as well. Uh, I guess we'll just keep doing this the whole show. The joke's on me. But isn't that what you sign up for with autofiction? No, but seriously, I found the, uh, the structure of the reality you build in the book fascinating. It reminded me of The Matrix. I mean, the writer is physically in his writer's room, trapped there, and he projects himself out to this dark dream of New York through the story he is writing. Uh, like astral projection. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Go on. I should be taking notes here. Uh, this is great stuff. Notes to that other Alan Wake in that room writing this as we speak? Are we all in your story, Alan? <laughs> wow. No, I, I, I wish you every success with your new book, Alan. I hope it's as successful as your best-selling Alex Casey series. Initiation hits the shelves tomorrow. After this, I'm sure we'll all be eagerly awaiting the culmination of this Hero's Journey trilogy of yours. A book called Return, perhaps. Man, thank you for one of the strangest interviews of my entire career, Alan. <laughs> Always talk of meta narratives. I'm expecting to disappear once the scene ends. <gasps> All right, so here we are in the Hello? studio. Alan is looking dumbfounded. Our objective right now is to get the hell up out of here. Something's not right here. I needed to get home to Alice. What the hell was that interview? Some kind of joke? Initiation? I never wrote a book called Initiation. 
This felt like a bad dream. Could make a good horror story. Uh, the door here will be locked and it does require a passcode. So we're going to backtrack. First of all, head to the first door on the right here. I was a mess. I'd never heard of this talk show or Mr. Door before. None of it felt right. Was I losing my mind? The only thing I found was this book, My Interpretation by Casper Darling. So we're going to head back out and go to the second room or the first room, depending on where you came Old from. Gods of Asgard. That name sounded familiar. All right, so as we turn the corner here, we will notice a three digit passcode or a three digit number. And of course, that is our passcode. So let's head back out to the door. There was something here. A broken transmission I couldn't quite make out. What was that? A message? Oh, impossible to say. We're gonna run to this door, but of course it is locked. Head back in the opposite direction through the door on the left. From here, you want to head to the red light. And a cutscene will begin. for air this place felt familiar a ghost of a memory surfaced about writing here for countless days all right so this is alan's version of the mind room a plot board for mapping out a story on the index cards the nightmare that just happened to me a summary of the story so far but other notes as well warnings i had written them i couldn't remember what it all meant the name Scratch filled me with dread. I could trust these words. I had to act on them. You must write to escape. Yeah, so Saga has a case board. Alan has a plot board. All right, so right here, Alan does realize he can edit the story by making a few minor adjustments. So we're going to be sent back to that interview. I didn't remember much. But I knew my thoughts and ideas could manifest as reality in this dark place. I'd use my writing to project myself out of this room. Like a deep sea diver to go deeper and explore the depths of this prison for a way out. This room was my boat. Writing was my lifeline. I would start again at the talk show. This time you will be joined by Alex Casey. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're too kind. Welcome back. Uh, we have a great show for you here tonight. We'll treat all you Alex Casey fans out there. Alex Casey himself is here tonight. That's right. Sam Wright, ladies and gentlemen. The actor who has given his face to the famous detective in the film series. And of course, we have Alan Wake here. Best-selling writer, the books, the films are based on. Let's do this! Welcome back to the show. So, 
Alan, as the uh, creator of the character, how do you feel about this? Sorry, what? I know it can be an awkward question with the man sitting right next to you, but I mean, how do you feel about him in the role of Casey? Does he look the part to you? <laughs> he looks exactly like I always imagined Casey to be. It's uncanny. Thank you. That means so much to me. I'm a huge fan of your books. So, uh, what's the problem, Alan? Because on more than one occasion, you voiced your reservations about the adaptations. Uh, it's not that. They're their own thing. They've gone with choices that are different from mine. I, I, I feel protective about my stories, and these adaptations... I, I don't know. I, I guess I just wish I could have been more involved in making them. Well, in that case, you won't have seen this either. We have a clip from the new film, Murder Case Casey. Should we roll it, or do you want to say something first, Sam? Nah, just roll it. This city was an old scar that refused to heal. The rain made it fester. It needed the sun, but there was only the night. I was tired. Insomnia covered me like a plastic film. I was watching the world through a rain-slick window, my own reflection haunting the view. I was trying to track down a missing writer. My only clue was a table lamp, shaped like an angel. The only thing that shed light on this sordid mystery. Case Casey. Great job, Sam. Very exciting and very meta. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Wait, stop. What was that about a writer? About a lamp? All right, so now it's going to be pretty much the same thing as the last exit only the code will be different at the door you'll have to wait and notice the pattern it's actually five six five All right, so once you're out, you're going to head back into the studio. Head toward the red light again. Uh, this time you will be in what looks like a cafeteria. Hello? Go ahead, get the map. And you want to head into the janitor's office. Ah, no raid. There you are, Tom. Oh, not so much evil that not a bit of good as well. Not one without the other. <laughs> good to see you. Hey, I, I can't seem to find my way out of here. Can you point me to the exit? <laughs> of course, Tom. The work will instruct its maker. I was gonna get something from the basement for you, but you can get it yourself now. Uh, the more cooks, the worse the soup. <laughs> what do you want me to get from the basement? And my name's Alan, not Tom. Yeah, yeah, but I got up a man's. A man, but the man with the tool makes two, Tom. <laughs> and a man with a tool 
can build his own exit. It's in a shoebox, in the basement where you left it. <laughs> Safe as in the Lord's purse. Here's the key. Have we met before? Are you trapped in the dark place too? You remember Ahti, the janitor. You can't be lost if you don't worry about where you are headed. So don't worry, Tom. The sun will shine even into a heap of twigs. Just remember to turn on the lights. It won't take long when you get to work. I've been trying to find a way to escape the dark place. Any suggestions? He who mouths about his troubles is the prisoner of his troubles. It's not easy to get out. But don't you worry, Tom. The home is still there where the heart is. I often think about it when I mop the floor and look into the puddle. Water is the memory of the world. Water finds its way. The janitor was a bit out there, but still a friendly face. Yum, -dum -bum 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 -bum. From here, we head down into the basement. And this is where we are going to uh, retrieve our trusty lamp, which will play a big part in Alan's story. An old lamp in a shoebox. Was this what the janitor had left for me? The lamp felt significant. A tool for bringing light to the darkness. I felt a magnetic pull between the lamp and the light overhead. Whoa! When the light jumped into my lamp, the whole room changed, like something in a dream. Opening a way forward, the lamp was humming. The bulb glowed. It held the light now. I felt another surge from the lamp. I could use it again. The glow in the lamp went out, shifting the light in the room. The light carved out something new from the darkness. to find another way out. Door leading out, but 
how you open a door that's not a door. At the bottom of an ocean, that's not an ocean. And a lake, that's not a lake. Alright, so now our next objective is actually heading out into the street. You can make a save here if you want. Once you're above ground, you want to go ahead and take that call from the phone booth. The payphone was ringing. Somehow I knew the call was for me. Hello? Hello, Wake? Yes. Do you know who I am? No. Who is this? We'll get to that later. There are spies all over. Shadows. A sense of deja vu washed over me. Had I had this conversation before? Alan, listen to me carefully. Caldera Street Station, the subway. You need to go there. I'll call you again later. Make sure to pick up. Do I know you? I, I know you from somewhere. You've just forgotten again. We're in it together. Don't worry. I got it now. We've been working. Great. I I'm losing you. Hello? Hello? <laughs> All right, so after the call, you're going to be looking for Alex Casey, who is now in this fictional dimension. The man had said Caldera Street Station. I had to go there. And he will be right down that way. Is this the way it was on the page? What the hell? Oh, hey. We met at Door's show. Alan Wake, the writer. I'm Alex Casey. I'm looking into a murder. Come on, what... What is this? There's a piece of evidence, a manuscript of a novel. You wouldn't know anything about it? A manuscript? What manuscript? I need to see it. Rumor had it the manuscript contained the details of the murders. A murder cult was following the story to commit their gruesome acts. Was Wake their leader? Had he written it? How far would he go to create a perfect work of art? Or would he be the next victim? Casey! Damn it. I remember dying in 
think you know. You know shit. You don't really want to know. You're gonna get what's coming to you. It looks like Mr. Casey is going to be having a really bad day. Go ahead, grab his flashlight and pistol. This was an echo of the books I had written for years. Picking up Casey's gun felt like I was assuming the role of the detective. I have a light now. I could use it to make my way deeper. So early game here with these taken shadows. You want to boost the light on the shadows. What will happen? It will take out the shadow completely or if it's a taken shadow, you'll have to shoot an enemy after you burn the darkness off of them. You'll now be faced with the task of getting down below into the subway. You want to head where we're headed right now to the flickering light. Once we do that, we have access to the stairway. We're going to follow the path around here. Get your light and pistol ready. They're going to be taking shadows here. So we're gonna grab the resources from this cooler and head up the ladder right behind us. Now you will encounter what is called an echo. To activate the echo, you will need to approach it from a certain angle. Rain tried to wash away the sins of this city. <laughs> but some sins, the evidence of the crimes committed, could never be erased. Not by the rain, or any amount of therapy from Dr. Jack Daniels. It remained bruises under my skin like tattoos bruises in my soul scar tissue on my heart the rain never stopped falling and i never stopped Head through the door and down the stairway. There's a save room if you want to utilize it. From here, follow this path around. And after taking out the shadows, you will get your first word of power. There's something hidden here. Light would reveal it. Now these words of power will be littered around the world. You want to look out for the yellow arrows. The phrase repeated over and over. The words resonated with meaning. Had I written this?
All right, let's head back up here. We're going to go through the alley. I'm going to go ahead and unlock this door just because I'm OCD. It's not necessary. You can also grab this loot in the box here. All right, we're gonna head back around. You'll notice the taxi. Fuck me. And once we have this light, we are now ready to head down into the subway. The Caldera Street station sign was there, but the entrance was missing. I had to make it appear. Maybe I could use the lamp to reveal the station entrance. The gates to the platform were closed. I had a ticket. Something about the station platform felt significant. It would work in my writing, but I needed more. Something lingered here. A half-forgotten memory. An echo. Murder. Murder. Mrs. Cult. The FBI agent had come here before me on the trail of a murder cult. He'd gone missing. Presumed dead. The cult was leaving me clues to follow, connecting the dots from one murder to the next, inviting me to draw an obscene picture on the city map. Caldera Street Station. The name made me think of the exit wound of a bullet. I had a flash of inspiration. The ghost of my fictional detective. A story thread I could use in my writing. I had a location. I had a story thread. I would put them together, write them into my story to create a path deeper into the dark place. We are now introduced to plot elements, and this will play a major part in Things the story writing the for Alan. Rang true. I was making progress. The dark place reacted to my story. The way into the tunnels was no longer blocked. The Fed had glimpsed into the maw of darkness. It swallowed him whole. The tracks led into the tunnel. That was my way forward. The blood trail continued deeper in the darkness. Alright guys, that is going to be it for this episode. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.